Uh, thanks, Allison. Yeah, so as Allison said, I'm Kyle Mestre. I'm the PTL for the Neutron Project, which encompasses networking and OpenStack. So these, these slides will just kind of go over some high-level details of what the Neutron team has planned for Kilo and what we're working on there. So go ahead and flip slide. Ah, okay, there we go. So I thought I would start off like I did last time with just a high-level overview of what the networking program's mission is here. So as you see, it's, it's to implement services and associated libraries to provide on-demand scalable and technology agnostic network abstractions. One thing that's, that's worth noting here and one thing that I'll bring up is, is the services portion of this and, and how some of that, how we're developing that and how that may affect operators and deployers. Um, we'll, I'll mention that as well later on in here. So I, I, start, I wanted to start off with highlighting um, key low priorities. One of the things that, that we did this time, which came out of the Design Summit in Paris, and, and even before that when we were talking about coming up with priorities for, for Neutron and Kilo, was we wanted to have a way to track the, the community important things. In Juno, we tried using a wiki page. We tried some different things around tracking you know, upstream community work that was really important for everybody. Uh, we've kind of evolved this a bit. So at this point, we are, we're now tracking it as an actual um, Thing in Neutron specs. We actually have that file there was actually committed. Um, we reviewed it. We were tracking the high-level features there as well. And this was important for us because it's allowing us to prioritize things. Um, and, and it also is transparent with all of the developers, users, and distributions around. These are the, the high-level things that we're all working towards. These are the important things that we're really trying to prioritize and line up and make sure that land in Kilo as well. And then the other th reason it's important, um, we've had a lot of input from distributions from, from the people who make distributions of OpenStack. And this allows them to kind of plan to understand what features are going to be in Kilo so they can start to make some plans around this as well. So we'll give this a try. It's kind of an uh, evolution from what we were doing in Juno. Um, but overall, I, I think so far it's, it's, it's working out pretty well. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the first things I wanted to highlight is parity with Nova Network. So this, this work has been ongoing for a couple of cycles now. Um, started really in Ice House where we started setting the groundwork for this. Continued in Juno where we had features like DVR that really closed the functionality and feature gap between Neutron and Nova Network. And during Kilo, um, we're going to really work on, on migrating Nova Network installs to Neutron. So we've, you know, we've really done a lot of work trying to talk with developers, users, operators, deployers around this. Certainly we'd love to hear from more around what their expectations and requirements are here as well. We, we have some work ongoing, which is kind of, a, um, it's kind of working between the Nova and Neutron teams around this migration effort. But, but the plan is to, to get something in place for Kilo that covers a certain amount of use cases for, for the migration from Nova Network to Neutron as well. There's also some, some work around the edges of, of the functionality gap. For instance, DVR is likely to have VLAN support, uh, whereas in Juno it, it just had tunnel network support. So that will help to kind of close some of the feature gap as well there. Um, next slide. So this, this is kind of one of the big items that we've, we've been talking about for a while. And this is really, this is really focused around stability and scalability. And, and kind of making Neutron more, the core of Neutron more of an evolvable, scalable project here as well. So this, this work was discussed in Paris in multiple sessions. It's, it's, you know, it's something that we're going to focus on at our mid-cycle coding sprint next week as well. And, and really, this, this work is going to, going to make Neutron much more stable, the core of Neutron. The two of the big things that we're looking to, to get out of this are actually the ability to, to better support out-of-tree extensions so we'll be able to allow people to do a lot of um, add-on support to Neutron much easier outside of the Neutron tree. And then also we plan to, to switch our homegrown WSGI over to Pecan, which I think is going to be a huge improvement um, for us as well. Uh, next slide. Plug-in decomposition. This is something that, that I really wanted to highlight um, because this again was discussed months before the, sub, uh, the summit. We also had multiple sessions at the summit for this, and, and we've continued to kind of discuss this on 
the review for the spec um, in the neutron spec repository as well. But really, what plug-in decomposition is about, it, it's about thinning the in-tree plugins and drivers that are upstream in the neutron core project and allowing a lot of that functionality to, to be moved out into the plug-in and driver maintainer's choice of where they want that. Um, really, this is going to address a lot of these pain points that, that have really frustrated everybody around this process. You know, review time, iteration speed, you know, how do we make it easier for the vendors to do their specific modules, things like that. So this, this process is, 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 you know, the hope is and the plan is to make it so that everyone can, can get a win out of this situation here as well. So, you know, that's, that's what we're hoping here. And really, you know, it's going to allow for fast iteration of both core neutron as well as the plugins and drivers. We've, uh, you know, this is something that, that I personally plan to continue to advertise on the mailing list and talk about with people. And, and I've already been working with some plug-in and driver maintainers um, on, on this, on how we can help them do this. But, but I think this is going to be a big win for everybody here. So this is, I wanted to highlight this at the front of this presentation. Uh, next slide. Testing. Um, testing is definitely something that, that the Neutron team has, has really taken taken a lot, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time on this really, really since ISELS we ramped up, you know, in, in Juno we got full API coverage for all of the Neutron APIs in Tempest. Um, really we're expanding what we're doing testing wise here to include full stack testing in the tree. We've got a spec out for review on that that looks like it's very close to landing. We're going to get increased functional testing um, of, the, of all of the agents you see here, the Open vSwitch agent, Linux Bridge, DHCP and metadata agents. And we're going to finish off the work around retargetable functional testing as well. Next slide. Agent refactoring. This, this again is, this, this kind of works towards scalability and stability improvements as well. Um, Neutron has a lot of agents that, that implement um, a lot of the functionality for the in-tree implementation, whether you're using Open vSwitch or Linux Bridge for your L2 stuff or you're using the L3 agent to handle floating IPs or routing or, or the DHCP agent to handle that portion as well. So really, as you can see here, it, it, the number one thing we're trying to do with this is around scalability, trying to make these agents more scalable. You know, we're going to add functional testing to all of these as well. For the L2 agent, we're going to improve uh, the RPC communication between that and the server as well. And we're also looking at various ways to improve the performance of the Open vSwitch agent around how we interface with OVS through OVS DB. They're, they're at, right now, we, we execute a lot of CLI commands, which, which have a high cost. So we're looking at more programmatic ways to do that as well. Um, on the L3 agent, we're also looking at how can we abstract out some of the service agents as well. And that plays into something I'll talk about in a, in a slide down the road here. But that, that's going to be a big win. And on the DHCP agent side, we're looking at some restartability improvements, um, some different scheduling mechanisms, both to handle load-based scheduling if you want to run multiple DHCP agents, and also around what happens if a DHCP agent dies, how do we handle you know, moving the, the work that it was doing to another agent. So, so all of these things are really going to be important for operators, and we're pretty excited about the work we're doing here. Uh, next slide. So advanced services split. This, this was what I was alluding to earlier, and this, this work is going on now as well. As part of thinning what's in the Neutron core project itself, you know, the, the team took a look at, at the services we have, load balancer, VPN, and firewall, and decided that you know, it made sense to, to split these out into separate repositories in the networking program. So work's already underway to do this. We have a spec upstream. Um, and, and we're going to proceed with, with uh, going down this path at this point. And ultimately, you know, the hope is we can allow operators the flexibility of running whatever services they want to offer their tenants. If they only want to offer load balancing, they can do that. If they want to offer L3, they can. It's also going to allow the teams working on this um, to iterate much more quickly outside of the scope of Core Neutron. Load balancer people, firewall, VPN, they can all focus on their own piece of this networking puzzle and hopefully iterate much faster there as well. Um, we hope to also reduce some of the gate testing complexity. Um, as the project has grown, you know, the complexity of the testing has grown as well. And then, you know, this may also allow us down the road to optimize some parts of Neutron into more core libraries shared across all of these different services. 
Uh, next slide. Pluggable IPAM. This, this has been talked about at various design summits probably for almost two years off and on now. Um, we've, we're actually really hoping that this is the cycle where this works and we've kind of made this one of the priorities as well. And the idea is, just like it says, we want to create um, a pluggable IP address management scheme in here so that third-party and vendor IPAM systems can integrate with Neutron as well. There's, there's a spec out for review on this. Um, we've had a lot of, lot of comments on it. Um, so we should be able to get this approved and we should be able to get this work into Kilo as well. Um, which will just provide some more options for deployers and operators around how they want to work with IPAM. Uh, next slide. So speed and reliability improvements. These, these are both, you know, obviously really important to deployers and operators. Um, and these two particular features kind of fall into this this category here. So the first one is agent child process status. So it's kind of a long way of saying that we're you know, we have someone who's writing some code which is going to monitor all of the agents that run when you're using um, either OBS or Linux, you know, bridge, those have agents. You have L3, DHCP, metadata agents. So this code will monitor and restart all of these agents if they should exit for whatever reason. So it's just a, it's just a nice way to provide a little bit more resiliency and a little bit more um, peace of mind for operators that are using all of these agents as well. Um, the other one is the root wrap daemon mode, this, this feature didn't quite make it into Juno, so you know, we, the plan is we have someone working on it for Kilo, so this should go in. And this really is just about you know, giving high performance access to root commands, um, which are run by the Neutron agents. So both of these are really about speed, reliability, improving things for deployers and operators, so we're, these are definitely going to make it into Kilo. Uh, next slide. Flavor framework, this is another item which we spent a lot of time discussing during Juno, but which we, we just, it just didn't make the Juno cut. Um, and part of that was because there was just so much discussion around it. Trying to reach consensus was somewhat tough, but I think near the end of Juno, we finally reached consensus, but unfortunately it was a little late to try to implement this. So we've revised this blueprint for, for Kilo, and the hope is we can get it pushed in for that as well. And so really, what is the flavor framework? The flavor framework is, is a nice way for network operators or for operators to offer network services to their clients. So you can, you can envision an operator that has, is, is maybe offering something like load balancing, for example. And maybe they have a bunch of really expensive, super fast hardware-based load balancers, and then they have some software-based ones as well, which maybe aren't quite as fast, but are much cheaper to deploy. So this would allow the operator to, to offer these to their clients with different service levels. And ultimately, they could, they could charge different amounts for these as well. Um, so it's a nice way for them to provide this functionality to all of their tenants, and it's a nice way for the, you know for them to have different service levels and, and things like that around some of these network services. So this is this is something that we're we're really excited about as well. Um, next slide. So Neutron NFV work. Um, again, we're we've been working with with the NFV team in OpenStack as well around this. I think the, the main things that we really would like to, to try to see happen here in Neutron around NFV are, are trunk ports. This has been discussed again for a while. There's, there's multiple use cases around offering um, trunked VLAN ports to virtual machines. We're converging around a couple of those use cases, and the hope is we can get those approved uh, for Kilo as well and get that in. And then the next option is, is uh, around seamlessly connecting hardware and Neutron L2 segments. There's some, some various blueprints around that, things like um, L2 gateways, things like that. Um, some of this, this work is still in discussion, but I think it's likely we'll, we'll come to a consensus and be able to get that into Kilo as well. Uh, next slide. So new plugins proposed. This, this, is, this is the current list of what you can see um, there's specs proposed for all of these different things. These, these range from service plugins around load balancing, firewall, VPN, L3, down to just L2 plugins. Um, there's some really interesting things on here. Um, a Neutron OBS agent for Windows around running Hyper-V with OpenStack, I think is pretty interesting for, for operators that are doing that. Um, this, this work will, will be affected by the plugin decomposition work at the front. So, you know, the core team is committed to working with, with the proposers of these blueprints to make sure that, 
that we refactor the blueprints to match the, the plugin decomposition spec, which, which is like to be approved this week. Um, but this just shows that, that we still see an increasing amount of, of plugins around all of the different services in Neutron being proposed um, with, each, with each cycle as we go forward. Um, next slide. So far, the only, um, the only plugin that, that, that a vendor or third party has marked as, uh, as deprecated is the, the Ryu plugin. And, and really, the Ryu plugin um, will be removed because it was deprecated in Juno. And ultimately, the team behind the Ryu plugin um, has a replacement that's been in Tree for a while now. It's uh, the OF agent running with ML2. It really subsumes all the functionality that the Ryu plugin had. So, but it's possible someone else may deprecate a plugin later. I know last cycle, Mellanox had deprecated something towards the end. So, but right now, at this point in Kilo, we just have one, one thing that's disappearing. Uh, next slide. And so really, that's kind of an overview of Neutron. Um, Thanks for letting me spend some time talking about this here. I think mostly we're focused around stability, scalability, and, and kind of refactoring, um, which hopefully will bring better, more stable experiences for all the operators and deployers. Thank you.